we start today with this week's primaries. What we saw was insurgents in both parties thwarted in their attempts to unseat incumbents and party pick candidates. But the party line is a system that is being challenged in the courts, and one of the plaintiffs in the suit is the New Jersey Working Families Party. Joining us today is the state director, Sue Altman. Hey, Sue. Good to see you. Hey, David. How are you? I'm doing good. So are we right? Is the line holding the big story out of Tuesday? I mean, obviously, yeah, the line is holding. And I think, you know, there's so much attention paid to the congressional races, and I think that's important. And those are the flashiest. Those get the most attention. But it also has such an effect down ballot, which means that the can the quality of candidates that then get to run for Congress don't have the level of experience or a voter base that we see in other states. So someone like Summer Lee, she runs in Pennsylvania. She's an insurgent. She wins uh, against the establishment incumbent. But she was a, a state rep before that. So she has a base of voters. So the line problem starts early in New Jersey politics and thwarts the ability for progressives and other outsiders to build a bench which really culminates in some shocking losses uh, on Tuesday. So we're thrilled that we're hoping we're on our way for that line system to finally go the way of the dinosaur. All right, I want to talk about um, that lawsuit, but we should give a quickie explanation, I think, of what we mean when we refer to the party line. Can you do that in 30 seconds for us? Oh, I've got this feel down perfectly, yes. <laughs> The incumbents and the establishment choices, the ones that are uh, supported and endorsed by the county party system, they get preferential treatment on the ballot in primary elections, which means they're all lined up from the top of the ticket, let's say it's Joe Biden, all the way down to your local city council races in a partisan race. So it gives the impression to the person coming into the voting booth that those people are the vetted proper candidates. And then the other challengers are located outside of that line in what we like to call ballot Siberia. And there are some really egregious examples of ballot Siberia that we've seen over the years, but it shows up on your ballot really egregiously that you're an outside candidate, which makes it, uh, it's sort of like, it's sort of like at a grocery store when you know that products pay a little extra to be on your line. So that's like what you see when you're picking out cereal, you're not looking down here and you're not looking up there. The ballot line works similarly, so it gives an advantage. Some studies say by Julia Sass Rubin, um, who's a professor at Rutgers, that it's up to a 35 point advantage in some races. So this is a major tipping of the scale. And you can see how over time and over uh, uh, you know, different races, different cycles, this problem compounds. So the basis of the suit is the design of the ballot or is that just part yeah. of it? Yeah, well, that's the base. I mean, this is a ballot design lawsuit. We are arguing that the ballot should not put the uh, finger on the scale to favor incumbents. All we want is a fair chance. County parties can still endorse candidates. That's not part of our lawsuit. We're strictly and very focused on the way ballots are designed in New Jersey in primary elections. We are the only state in the country to do it this way. It's a bad, egregious example of bad democracy, which I think we see as this accumulates through our system, incumbents who are way past their expiration date still sitting in office. Policies that are very out of step with the public at large um, in the state legislature. Uh, a lot of places in county government that don't have any competitive elections at all, not the D's versus R's in the general and not in the primary election, which leads to a lot of, in my opinion, local government, particularly county government, controlling a ton of money with no checks and balances. So we are committed right. to changing this system because it's bad for New Jersey. All right. So the judge in the case issued a ruling a couple of weeks ago. What, what was that? Just that the case can go forward, right? Yeah, it was getting through the motion to dismiss point in time. So, you right. know, you, you sue somebody and then the judge decides whether or not there's enough evidence there to keep the case moving or if you've made this up and it's no good. Our, the judge in this case, case judge, has decided we're, we're moving forward. Yeah. Right. All right. I want to play this clip from Chatbox this week uh, where Steve Sweeney, the former state Senate president, was asked about this very thing. Let's hear what he had to say, and then we'll come back and get your thoughts on it. No one's denying a county line to an, or an opposition. This is what people miss. In my mind, they're lazy because they're not willing to go out and get the candidates they need to get the county line. First, I'm sure you love being called lazy by Steve Sweeney, but aside from that, <laughs> is he right? 
<laughs> no, of course Steve Sweeney's not right. What kind of a question is that? The man lost but to Ed Durr. He's not right. Would we stop listening to All right, him but listen, <laughs> can't any party just put a slate together and get into the ballot, into the ballot position drawing? So it's not so simple. Um, there are no consistent rules from county to county. So we've seen within congressional races, like Amy Kennedy ran in a primary in 2020, she got placed in different, even though she had the right type of candidates that they're talking about, you need a county freeholder candidate or commissioner candidate. And yep. uh, she still got put in different places in different counties across South Jersey. So no, I mean, former Senate President Sweeney is mistaken. It's not so simple. And then the other problem is you shouldn't have to find a presidential candidate to bracket with in order to run for your local town council. That's absurd. That's just ridiculous. So no, I, right. this is this is old school establishment talking um, and I'm over it. You disagree. Let, let me get a panel question in here. Michael Simons, you got a question? I was wondering what your thoughts were about the this moderate party that is attempting to get on the ballot and sort of uh, have Tom Malinowski as their candidate in this particular uh, instance and combine the votes that he gets on, on both ballot positions, this idea of fusion voting. Michael, hi. I love it. I think fusion voting is fantastic. Um, and I think we have it in New York. We have it in Connecticut. Um, the WFP, Working Families Party, has a line in those places. But beyond that, I think we're at a point in our very fragile democracy, and last night's January 6th hearings were harrowing, um, where we need a home for people who identify as moderate. So I support the effort in CD7. Um, I think those people are doing good work. And I more importantly support, not more importantly, but of equal importance, support ballot, support fusion voting, and think it's an, a healthy ecosystem that could emerge so that people can send messages to their elected officials from the party they identify with. In this, now we're talking in the general election, not the primary. Uh, I'm curious if any conservative Republicans have jumped on as plaintiffs or, or filed uh, amicus briefs. Uh, a different ballot line, uh, no line, might have helped uh, uh, Phil Rizzo or Hirsch Singh or Ian Smith, no? You hear from any of those? Are we talking, uh, no, we're talking primary. We're, we're moving from fusion yeah, back to the primary um, ballot line. No. Um, yeah, we haven't, you know, I would welcome a uh, bipartisan and cross-partisan Amishi in the uh, line lawsuit for primary uh, elections. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I think, look, I might not agree a lot with like a conservative or libertarian party, um, but if they're trying to run in a primary and they're facing the same barriers, then like, let's get together and work on that together. All right, I have two quick questions, right? Number one, would you eliminate the line in the general election too? That is just so throw everybody up there. Totally different, totally different scenario. So I think fusion voting is a great system um, for general elections. And I think that a line that's along party lines sends a different message than a line that's along primary lines. You know, in a primary, you're presumptuously all part of the same party. So grouping them by line, I think, sends a false message. In a general election, you're part of a party. So I think grouping them along the line is a coherent system, just like they have in New York and Connecticut. Huh. All right, uh, let me ask you this last quick question, which I think I brought up once before a long time ago and got such negative feedback, but uh, Sue Altman, candidate for what? Soon enough. Candidate for what? Right yeah. now I'm working on fixing this broken system we have, David. Like one candidate so cannot you gotta change. you got to fix it first? We got to fix it first, not just for me. We got to fix it for yeah. everybody. Like, who knows what Sue Altman is going to do, but I am very, very committed right now to fixing what I think in New Jersey is an egregiously broken system at multiple levels and a country whose democracy is falling apart in front of our eyes. So that, to me, is more important than me running for any office. Bigger stuff to do right now. All right, Sue Altman is the state director for New Jersey Working Families Party. Sue, great to see you. Nice to see you as always, David.